But moving on to The Flash, Michael, your temperature on the episode better than last week? Well, it's not the hotness, I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> I feel like uh, I'm in two minds about this episode, like I was last week, but I'm more get- leaning towards the positive side this week because the hotness, who, and he was not called that when he appeared in season four. It still makes me feel weird saying that out loud. <laughs> um, he, when he showed up in season four, he was the most one dimensional villain we've ever seen in our lives. And he was basically just a plot device to let Iris use her speed. Iris used her speed beautifully, but it didn't make him a strong villain. Um, and he said, literally, we can quote, he has gone down in history as the villain with the worst tagline in history. Literally, I want my money. That was his motivation. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> wait, okay, hold on. <laughs> so you're telling me that's the hotness? That's yes, the tagline? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what he says. Yes, and um, I want oh, my money. Lord. He said it over and over again. And in the episode, in season four, yes, what made him such a bad character was, um, uh, he he was a normal person who suddenly got superpowers, and then he decided to use superpowers to rob banks. And like when the CCPD was trying to stop him, he was like, "I don't think so, copper. I'm not leaving until I get my money." And then he like, <laughs> then he like heated up with all his fire. Um, and everyone's oh, like, so he has a fire. That's why he's on the hotness. His, exactly. His it's just all around. Moments. I'm sorry. I know you guys love the show, but <laughs> I, I'm holding it in. The hotness is so stupid. Um, I'm, pre- I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure he used to be called Pyro. I don't know That's where the better. hotness came from. Exactly. I don't what know where the hotness, the hotness came from. Oh I don't God. know. <laughs> I remember they said the hotness is returning for season eight. I was like. Who's the hotness? The hotness so, doesn't sound like a person. It sounds like the hotness is returning. It's like, oh, they're turning the heat up on season nine or whatever. Exactly. It does sound like that. Maybe it has to do with the band that he enjoys. Because what is it? The Lips, which is clearly yeah. Kiss, I think. What? <laughs> yeah. But, um, and <laughs> what's what happening also, on this show? What, what made it worse was he was a random dude who got superpowers and tried to rob a bank for the money in season four. And he was arrested wearing that outfit. But the, the, uh, this episode, the reason they all thought he was the perp when he wasn't, the reason they all thought he was the perp was because one of the victim or one of the witnesses said he was wearing a T-shirt with lips on it. And Barry's like, bet yeah, it's him. And I was like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> it's like anybody could have worn that shirt in the last four years. Why does that mean it's him? Um, but anyway, here's to the positive. Um, the hotness has gone down in infamy as one of the worst bad guys the Arrowverse has ever seen be- just because he was so one-dimensional. And well, that's a positive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, and then, uh, okay, they decided to reboot a story and do a really deep emotional story by using the most one-dimensional character they've ever had. So that on its on its own is a positive because it means there's more to the hotness than the money. And uh, <laughs> stop doing that, <laughs> <laughs> with me. <laughs> I'm like um, crying a little on that one. <laughs> like just <geez. laughs> Um But anyway, long story short, apparently he had a son. He wanted to look after his son. He was innocent. He served his four years in Iron Heights and he got out. But there was a fire mad at killing people who he happened to get into an argument with. So I was like, okay, these people are dead and their bodies are burnt. And they just recently argued with the hotness. Clearly it's him. But um, Barry, uh, Barry had an emotion. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when you said they had the argument with the hotness and I lost it. So I'll just continue. I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about sad things, guys. Um, it was. Barry's... I haven't heard a word you said about this guy <laughs> since all of the the, the money oh. things. <laughs> but keep going, please. Um, but long long story short, Barry wanted to honor his father, who was wrongly in prison, so he believed in the hotness. I can't even say. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Barry was right. The, the The villain, I'm going to call him the villain, was innocent in the end. He was not the villain. <laughs> It did take a bit of a turn and Sabrina's live tweet and killed me because I was sitting crying my eyes out at a really nice emotional moment. And then I was like, yeah, no, when you look at it like that, that's pretty off the wall. Um, so, but anyway, the long story short, the fact that an episode of the fashion season eight after last week's gold face ridden episode actually managed to make me feel something. The fact that Barry was felt like the lead character in his own show. The fact that they hark back to Henry Allen, who ha- hasn't obviously been on the show since season two it all kind of came together for me and felt like a much stronger episode. Yes, there was a lot of on the surface weakness 
And that that's just, I've, we've come to expect that from the Flash eight seasons in. An, an emotional episode from the Flash eight seasons in, seasons in is not going to be as good as an episode in season one. That's just that's just the heart of it, the truth of it. But it did have some a lot of season one-like qualities. And I also felt like that about the Barry and Kramer stuff last week. So in general, I feel like the show's on the right track. It's a lot of bad things it needs to cut loose. But the fact that they managed to turn the most one-dimensional villain, I'm not going to use his name, into a mildly layered character and Max Adler, who plays him, did a fantastic job because there wasn't tons to work with. There was something to work with, but he did a great job making me feel it. Um, the son wasn't the most likable character, but I guess there's his extenuating circumstances. Um, but in general, it was a solid episode of The Flash. I think if a perfect episode of The Flash for me that, that just pulled on your emotional cords in season one was a 10, I'd give this one an eight. For me, it was solid. I do see the weaknesses. I do see it went off the wall because we suddenly started, went from an emotional father trying to do right by his son to, oh my God, your anger has stirred magma under the surface and it's going to start exploding all over Central City and Perkin or Frost is going to get roasted alive. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Don't. But, but all in all, it was another solid episode of The Flash and I was very critical of season seven, but season eight is mostly, Armageddon was perfect, but we're not in Armageddon anymore. These last three episodes, there's been more good than bad about them. Last week was more of a mixed bag, but other than that, it's still on a solid track. We'll never have The Flash of the old that we did have, but right now we have Flash that's better than what it's been in recent years. And I like that. So that episode for me was a win. It was a middling episode for me. So if you would give it an eight, I'd probably give it a seven. I was going to say mom about the magma until we got to this because really it does get ridiculous by the end of this episode. I don't know why we chose to go that direction, but that's the direction that they went. But to to speak on the positives before I talk about the things that um, weren't as strong, uh, I do think it was nice coming off an episode that was as, ridiculous as lockdown was in terms of its character balance uh and tonal balance to have uh the fire next time which was connecting Barry to an emotional time because it's his, it's his father's birthday um and having that connect to the overall storyline like I didn't care for um Harold which is is Jacko's son mm-hmm. um Jacko Jerko Jacko Jacko's son um Mainly because if we're going to talk about it, it's, they made, uh, I'm just going to call him Birch. They made Birch more like somewhat multidimensional, but then they made his son one dimensional because mm-hmm. um, he kind of just, he just really, really hated him. And we didn't know about this young man prior to this episode. So there was no, like, there was no sort of um, way for us to get connected to him. It was more so only connecting to Birch. Uh, so I wasn't really feeling that storyline outside of uh, Barry's scene with Joe, which felt like season one. That really, truly mm-hmm. felt like a beautiful scene between Barry and Joe, the likes of which we haven't seen in quite some time because they were allowed to talk about Henry and what he meant to Barry and who he was as a person outside of being, um, um, outside of the dark moment in both Barry and his life when he was taken to jail. Uh, other than that, I was mostly paying attention to the Iris storyline because I love when we're at Central City um, Citizen. Um, I love that she was being a boss lady and that she was teaching Allegra how to be a good supervisor. Allegra didn't really take the notes that she needed to take. Mm. But um, as far as getting into some investigative reporting, connecting back to the fact that Allegra has been in jail, um, and that has affected her worldview and how even having that worldview, she too has a bit of privilege that she did not recognize until speaking to um, a former friend who they both went to jail, but Allegra is, is prospering in a way that her friend is not. And her friend is not because she has not been given the opportunity that Allegra was, mm-hmm. um, that was given. And Ale- it was nice seeing Allegra sort of realize, that, hey, you've been through a lot. But it's also true that you're not moving through the system the way that your friend is moving through the system. Mm. And then you should recognize that. Yeah. And I said, I think that story had an awful lot of like, again, I keep saying this surface layer uh, greatness, but 
not enough work was done beneath that depth. I feel like that story with Allegra, you know, you know, I have not really connected with that character and I really, really wanted to. And I feel like that was something that could have made me connect with that character, her motivation, her uh, desire to tell this other person's story. And then we, that other person was literally a plot device. She never surfaced mm-hmm. at all throughout the rest of the episode. And it became all about Allegra's. I'm going to make my boss happy by doing exactly what she didn't want me to do. And then it became kind of goofy. The Iris scene where she kind of told her off, but congratulations her at the same time was golden in that moment iris kind of reminded me of cat grant and that like that firm boss with heart who loved your staff but was like you need to look after everybody this isn't just about you that to me is what iris has been missing because this, the writers have not been giving it to her and when if the writers give iris more stuff like that it's what she deserves it's what she deserved like in season three but we're here now and we're finally starting to say it so i'm, gl- I'm glad uh, iris kept that story alive for me because I feel like every time Allegra gets a story it's turned into something goofy or lighthearted and I feel like they could be doing more with that character and for me Iris was Iris was the shining light in that story for me and I would really like to see more of her being the boss lady of CCC Media Mm -hmm. I just think she's great she's amazing and that's why I wish um Allegra as a character would rise more to her level I mean I'm Mm -hmm. I know that we're supposed to be seeing the contrast of how um, Iris works as a boss, um, giving you both the positives of what you've been doing and the negatives, like taking you to task for not doing the thing that she told you to do. But like when the Lego went to go apologize to that uh, staff writer who was supposed to be, um, that's the person that she supervises. It felt like a discussion between two employees. Like it did not feel like a discussion between um, someone, someone with their supervisor. And it's because she hasn't risen to the level of uh, maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I guess professional development that she needs. I mean, I was tweeting that she needed to get onto LinkedIn Learning or like Skillsoft. She needed to get like take some notes because she needs all of the classes because that discussion should not have happened the way that it happened, and she did not carry herself like a supervisor at all. No, no, and I I think that's done now. So that that whoever that person is, I can't remember her name. I don't think enough's been done with that character who, who said that to her, that employee. I think that's been done so that can come up later. And you're like, but if this was the real world, Allegra would just simply have told Iris that and the problem would have been dealt with. But the fact is, you're right, they talk to each other like equals. And of course, it's important to talk to everyone like they're equals. But that person showed Allegra no respect because Allegra hasn't really risen to that status as supervisor. And I feel like if she'd been given the attention that she needed properly, she would have done that by now. Yeah, to, to Luke, you in read what happened was they were supposed to do a puff piece about an influencer. And Allegra did not want to do that piece because she sees um, the central city citizen as the voice of the people. But she has a specific uh, perspective on what the voice of the people is. And um, Iris was saying that we need to get eyes on the site. So that means that we need to do the stories of our hearts, but we also need to do the stories that people are also interested in. And Allegra was like, "Mm -mm, I'm going to go interview my friend. And that's what she did. And she left the other employee to handle the uh, influencer piece on her own. And that influencer piece got bumped off the feature on the main site. So, of course, she was very, very upset because it felt like Allegra stabbed her in the back. And technically, that is exactly what Allegra did. She did not act like a supervisor. She did not even really act like a, a team player. And she was, in fact somewhat rewarded for it because the story that she did was superior to the one that the other writer did. Uh, um, And though Iris did not want to reward her, it was the better piece. And that's just what was going to happen. But she made her go apologize to her fellow writer. And that apology was trash. Not like her way of saying it. You could just tell that she wasn't really that sorry that that's what happened. She felt, you could tell she felt superior. And that is how she carried herself. And it was just, it did not go well. The girl said that she was going to end her whole career. So it's a, it's uncomfortable at Iris's workplace now. Very uncomfortable. I feel like Iris could use a visit from Fallon Carrington. <laughs> that would solve employees. every problem. Yeah, whip those employees into shape. <laughs> <laughs> help I her out. It was so fun. I really want a crossover. I feel like we keep talking about it and manifest it. It'll at least happen in the TV spot. It would be so funny if Fallon like happened to see the flash in his suit and just was like looked him up and down and just like walked away like she doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a superhero, whatever. <laughs> and I was saying hair flip. So like, 
just don't um, make sure she doesn't get held up by anyone who wants money oh, sorry yeah. that's sad <laughs> no. one more point about the episode um the magma i was so lost and i was so lost because bear was already right about what was going on but then the team had to do their own work to then be on the same train as him as seeing that he was right. And then it became lava under Central City exploding because of Birch's anger, which doesn't really make any sense. But Barry's going to do this really cool thing off screen and he's going to save he's going to save everybody in Central City and it's going to be great. And Jacko's going to feel like he is a hero too. And then suddenly Harold is going to like him as a father. They're going to be reunited. And well, not the end of the episode, but happy ending for all. Barry got to see a father and son reunited, even if we don't care about that father and son. This is my problem. Uh, <laughs> you, you literally summed it up in that paragraph. It feels like the final act always needs to do too much to wrap up the story as, and that final act was working overtime because I was like, whoa, what is going on here? The dialogue basically did all the work and that should never happen. And it also portrayed Barry like a terrible team leader because Frost was standing there the whole time. Wait, what do I do? Where am I supposed to go? Wait, oh, lava. And so it just <laughs> too much was happening there. And it made, again, put a good character, like potentially great character like Frost down. He didn't advise her of anything. She was standing there not knowing what to do. I literally almost got killed by falling lava and uh, then basically stood while uh, the Flash and uh, Jocko saved the day. And I'm like, what was the point in having her in that scene at all? It just, it felt like everything was happening around her, just like everything was happening around us as we watched it. That final scene and the dialogue in it was working overtime to try to make sure we followed and we weren't following because it was very, we said Superman at Lois was confusing in a good way. This was confusing in a very bad way. Yes, the lava special effects were very impressive, but it didn't make up for the fact that it was very hard to understand why this was all happening. Every time he spoke and got angry and the earthquake started, I thought that was a reference to the real fire meta off screen that we couldn't say. And like, oh no, wait a minute, he's actually getting angrier and he's making the lava beneath the earth's surface, even though he's only in Central City, uh, boil up. And like, are we not reaching here? Would that not make him like the most powerful meta of them all? Why are we not ta- telling that story instead? It's too much was happening in that final act. And it was done in a very surface layer. Yeah, everybody goes ha- home happy kind of way. And like, it, it's great that we'll never have to think about it too much again, because like thinking about it hurts your head. Too much happened in that story. And I don't, not sure it was portrayed. It, it was wrapped up in the way it needed to be. Because like you said, Barry ended up saving the day off screen. <laughs> 